Hi there, welcome to the British Garden Club channel. We are here today with Hannah in Grimmore and her lovely daughter, Georgia. And we're going to be doing a bit of an interactive potting session today. So, um, yeah, you guys all up for it? Ready yeah, we're really yeah. looking forward to this and we've got lots of questions for you, Emily, so we can't wait. <laughs> we love a couple of questions, especially about our lovely new products, which are our volcanic stones, which are over here, and our lovely botanical coconut compost, which are over there. So we're literally just using our two products to repot these variety of lovely plants here. So you've got, you've got your little baby orange tree. Nice. We've got a little, nice little almost Christmas tree. And then we've got a little heavy ball over here. We've got a long Great. range. So why do we start with these, Emily? So, Volcanic drainage stones. Yeah, so what we're going to do is start with these. And they're basically, these are kind of, you, let me get some out. I don't know whether you can see any of these. But they're really lightweight. And they're basically, the structure of them inside, it's kind of, it's got like holes in it, which you can potentially see a couple of holes like in there. So when we put them in the bottom of the pot, when this, the water goes through the soil, obviously, it will kind of sit in the stones for a little bit, which means that the plants can kind of use them as they want to, right. which is pretty useful. So um, yeah, you can just tip those into the and how there. And how much should we put in? You probably want to put in about like two, like an inch, just okay. over an inch. Okay. So a little bit of a tip in there. Keep going. A couple of centimeters. There we are. Smooth it out. That's great, that looks good. It's really good to <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it's also really convenient because you can literally just you know, put them out first, so <laughs> that's good. So, Emily, tell us a bit about the British Garden Club because it's really great being here today learning. Yeah. Um, but tell me about the British Garden Club and how it started. So it's basically been a bit of a COVID baby, really. Um, it started Great. off when all the garden centres were closed and obviously plants literally generate oxygen. So we want fresh air, we want clean, healthy homes. And what's great about this is so these, this is definitely a house plant indoors, obviously. This can be either way and then this is an outdoor plant. So we're wanting something that wherever you are, you, in your home, you can get loads of fresh air in your home and oxygen or out here in, in the garden, if you have a garden or a balcony. Um, again, it's just getting plants into your lives, getting that oxygen, getting fresh air, getting out and having something that you know makes you happy because plants do actually make me a bit happy. So Great. We love happy, <laughs> That's don't we, really Georgia? That's always good. Um, and you talk about it being a rural-based brand, so tell us more about that. Yeah, so I think it's really important at the moment just to support British business in general. At the moment, we are, you can see behind us, there's loads of trees. We're pretty much in the middle of nowhere, really. Um, but what, we've, what we love doing is working you know, with rural businesses. So all of our suppliers are rural, small companies. The packaging, etc. everything comes within a 40 mile radius. And I'm really passionate about kind of spreading out into the local area and promoting local businesses because you know you don't have to go to the city to do something. Lo there are loads of amazing small businesses right out here. I mean, we're in Northamptonshire at the moment, but right out here in the surrounding areas. And that's something that I'm really, really passionate about as well. And I feel like you guys as well are coming from this area. Mm, great. You can relate to it, right? We can, and I think we feel very proud to be from Bedfordshire, yeah. don't we? And, um, and as you know, Captain Sir Tom is my father and George's yeah. grandfather, and mm. there's nothing that made us prouder than being from this region. So we exactly. really want to support any local businesses. Mm -hmm. And this is great fun. It definitely mm. is. And he's done so well. You know, he was out you know, in your garden, loving the outside, yeah. doing his walking around. And it just shows, you know, anywhere you are, you can do something and you can, you can achieve things and do things and, you know, get media attention, et cetera. And, you know, go out and do things, which is amazing. So yeah, definitely is. And, and why don't yeah. you tell Emily about some of the things you used to do with Grandad in the, in the um, greenhouse? So we used to plant carrots, potatoes, um, tomatoes, tomatoes, strawberries, raspberries, <laughs> well, anything, anything. really. Yeah. And you had really good fun with him doing yeah. that, didn't you? And it's the best thing when you get to pick them and eat them as well, isn't it? Because you've grown that, it's literally yours. And off you go. Yeah, definitely. We yeah. love it. So um, show us the next steps. Oh, yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is just get our little bags of compost. And we're just going to tip a little bit in there. So, so how much is a little bit? Depending on how big your pot is, what you're going to want to do is just put put it so that the plant will fit in there with a layer underneath it. OK. So kind of good. assess go. the situation. <laughs> and this, I have to tell you, and I wish you could all smell it. This smells absolutely 
amazing. Why does it smell so good? So again, it's a mixture of some coconut husks, which basically absorb water, um, but they also allow it to drain through, which is pretty crazy. But um, yes, yeah, so they basically keep the water moving through so you don't get root rot or anything. But it's also mixed in with some local compost, um, which is sort of locally. And it's basically made, made from kind of the food and the like natural kind of green um, produce from the area. So it's really hearty stuff. It's completely peat free, so it's really sustainable. Um, and we're literally building off that byproduct. So when you do give it a bit of a smell. <laughs> it smells absolutely incredible. I it do wish so that we had smelly vision. Yeah, and not in a kind of like manure way, like in an actual. No, no, in a really robust outdoor country, <laughs> outdoor kind, of country kind of way. And talk to me about peat free, and that's why it's sustainable. And you talk about that, and I know it's really important, but maybe explain to us why being peat free is really important. So at the moment, all kind of big um, compost companies that you'll see in those big garden centres, etc., are using peat moss in some form or another. And they're very good at like hiding it. So you'll look on the back of the packet and you can't really see it, but there'll be some sort of indication that they do use peat moss. Also, when they dig it up, you're basically releasing CO2 into the atmosphere, which is really bad. Really bad. Um, and completely not really needed because what's great about this as well is it's got it's got phosphates in it, lots of potassium and nitrogen in it. So you're getting the phosphates are for the roots, which basically give you really strong root development. And then the potassium is kind of the water, how the plant handles water, so it makes it stay really nice and firm. And then the nitrogen is for growth and like flowering. So you're getting all of that in here right. <laughs> without using any peat moss. And what they basically, the, the, the purpose of having peat in compost is to give it that kind of like fluffy texture. But I mean, this is still really, it's, it's very fluffy. fluffy. <laughs> Mm. Um, it's fluffy, isn't it? And light, and it and smells really so good. Light. So okay. we've kind of managed to achieve that without putting peat in it. Well, I think it amazing. looks it looks great. So, what do we do next? So our next thing is, depending on what plant we have, what we're going to do is just take the plant. I'll probably show you this one actually. Yeah. So we'll watch. Emily, although you're a bit of an expert, Georgia. Yeah, the, I mean, you've done a I'm, lot of gardening with this. I'm the least plant. skilled of us all. With the granddad, so just pull it open and then. Hopefully, it will jigger out. I think this is kind of I'll take your pot. Oh, well, you obviously gave us the easy ones, so yeah, thank you. Because <laughs> ours look great. <laughs> the thing with Healy boards is they, get, they have really deep roots, so you can kind of see them going oh, out yeah. the bottom here. So I'm just trying to like force them back in so I can pull this pot out. And I, well, I think the great thing is this, is we're um, hopeful that Georgia can take hers back to school, yeah. right? Yeah, because this is, the again, the whole kind of point of the brand is that anybody can garden wherever they are. If you want to grow anything, you can go with it. So you can take this back to school and literally put it on your bedside table. It's got a nice tray underneath it, so there's no In nets. the garden. Put it in the garden. Get your friends to help you. Yeah, wherever, yeah. And, and grow it. And it's kind of in the pot. All good. And I think any anybody else watching that and um, this can do that too. Yeah, exactly. And you should share those photos with Emily online and, and you can compare plants and what you're growing and you can get tips from her which will be great. So mm. like join in, let's have a let's yeah. get this British Garden Club oh, going. Yeah, exactly. Look at the roots on there. That's there. amazing. Look at this those. Is so yeah, these again are really, really deep roots. So I'm glad I didn't have that one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I'll just put it in here. So we're just going to put this little, little fella in the pot. Okay. Um, and then just from around your pots, we're just going to get some more soil. And kind of put it in around. And just kind of fill it up really. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the messy bit of the top. But again, like, like a bit of mess. Yeah, yeah, we do love a bit of mess. But again, you know, considering it's all in the packet, so it's really simple. And this is really easy for anybody to do. You just yeah. need a, a pot, some of the um, these really lovely um, yeah. stones, the volcanic drainage stones, and they're in really easy to store packets. So you don't have to worry about buying something that's 10 kilos or five kilos. These can literally just sit in a cupboard. Yeah. And it's all, um, well, talk about the packaging, because yeah. I love the packaging. So I actually designed this, and I'm pretty proud of it, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> so it literally has a little resealable thing at the top here. So whenever you're done and you want to pot another one, this one's empty, because I've just got one in here. But whenever you're done, you can literally just pop it shut and then leave it wherever you want to leave it for however long. And then go again. So there's none of that leaving it outside and it gets all wet and it's horrible. 
there's none of that going on. Um, yeah, so it's just it's really really it. simple. And again, we've gone for we've gone for like the most robust kind of packaging that we can do. And it's also and it's locally sourced near us, so it's really sustainable. Um, so it's actually on the back of our packet. Actually, it says where most I think about eighty five percent of this product has come from a forty mile radius. Well done. Really useful. It's really really good. So, I think you've done such a good yeah. job. Thank you guys. Okay. Great. Try not to spill all this everywhere. Yeah. But it doesn't matter if you spill it either, does it? No, it really doesn't. Because, yeah, we're, we're growing the plants here. <laughs> That's good. Just give this a little bit of a pat down. Great. I'm loving mine. Yeah, you just love them. I just like to be able to eat them, but apparently I can't, right? No, they'd be very bitter, I think, if you did eat them. Shame. Um, we don't want any runny tummies, do we? So, no. Because <laughs> we want to we'll come We'll just back look at them. them. <laughs> we, want it, we want this to be a good experience. Great, right. so. lovely. We love it. We love it. Um, so yeah, so we're all, all looking good. But yeah, these are our final products. What do we think, guys? I think they look great. Yeah. And what would we do now? Would we water them now? Yeah, so we would water them. We do actually have a little watering can. So I'll just give my little, little water. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Give them, just a, little, water give them it. a little water. Give them a little water. This is the thing as well, which you don't realise, especially with indoor plants, top tip, don't overwater them because you Thank want to give you. them so much love and attention, but actually they're pretty, they're pretty robust. Um, yeah. So Thank yeah, you. about once a week, twice a week, depending on how dry the soil is. That's a really good tip because I never know how much to water. Um, I've yeah. got and some. I have um, cacti at home too. Oh so yeah. I have to look after them. Oh, we're yeah. much better at it than me. We've got some Japanese money plants in the office. Oh, have you? And um, they're for prosperity. Yeah. That's what so we're I hoping. So I normally water them. Do you water them? Because yeah. I water them too. So we probably give them far <laughs> too much. It's a great thing though about this because a lot of the time in garden centres you're going to see like cacti mixes, succulent mixes of compost. And all it is is basically a lot more stony compost. So with this, what's also great with these two is you can kind of mix them together depending on how stony you want the compost. Nice. So for your cactus or succulent, you'd probably just chuck in, in, in your pot like we did. Instead of putting soil in around it, you'd put some stones in and then mix it in and then just great. put it around. We so, best do that next time. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. Next time you got you got it. <laughs> so you can literally grow pretty pretty much anything. Obviously, if there are some specialist plants which I wouldn't put in them. But for repotting, this is ideal. Um, Great. Perfect. Well, we've loved it. Thank you very yeah. much. We feel like we've learned a lot. Yeah. You feel? Yeah. I hope you've had a good time as well. Because we had a really good time. Yeah. Too. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll um, keep <laughs> photographing them. Yeah. And you'll share the photographs. Yeah. Yeah, or not. And Instagram. then we can compare, and I think it would be great if everyone else got involved as well. So thank you very much, Emily. Thank We've loved you. it. And um, let's so go for the British Garden Club. Thank you so much. And again, the Cats and Tall Foundation, we wish you all the best of luck with that. And we'll be tagging you in loads of stuff. Thank and you know very we'll be much. Doing. Some more products, we'll more projects together. In the I future. think so, and and the Caps and Tom Foundation, you know, our vision is for a more hopeful world, inspiring hope where it's needed most. Mm -hmm. And um, what could be more hopeful than new plants? So uh, thank you very much. Been yeah. terrific. Thanks.